I had some some field service people working with about three of us that took turns in doing the installation. One time we were called to go up to um, uh, upstate New York to the um, up in the mountains about um, 20 miles away and we had to design special antennas to get pictures up there in some of those resorts, you know, in that area. One time I took a television set, one of these um, field strength meters up to Mount Greylock, which is, I think, uh, 50 miles away to measure the signal strength of the stations up there. And I was down in the Library of Congress not long ago looking at some of Dr. Dumont's records, which are at the library, and pulled out the report on Mount Greylock, which I'd sent to the FCC, saying we got a signal 50 miles away from the New York stations. And another experiment on that early days was I put a, one of these Dumont 14 inch sets in my automobile. I had the first mobile television receiver in the world, I guess, in my car. And so Jack Popoli, who was head of the Voice of America and of the mutual broadcasting for a while, and I started to drive up the Hudson River from New York. Remember, Channel 4 is NBC. Right. Channel 4 was also Schenectady, the GE station, co-channel signals. So we drove up the river watching the television in my automobile, and all of a sudden, gradually developed herringbone interference from co-channel interference. First time we'd ever seen it. First time people had ever diagnosed what that was, probably. So as a result of that particular trip, those stations are only about um, oh, 100 miles apart. We wrote to the FCC and said, this is a co-channel interference problem we should not allow to happen and the FCC changed the regulations, largely upon Dumont's recommendation of how far stations should be on co-channel assignment, how much closer they could be on adjacent channel assignment. So they changed the GE station from channel four to channel three to be co-channel with Philadelphia, which cleared up that situation. So that allocation plans for the whole system was a large part of Dumont's activity. I had a crew of about um, 15 people working on that allocation plan and presenting the stories to the FCC. A lot of the papers were right there on that um, library table about that whole effort. Now, was, was it on that trip or a similar uh, expedition in the car that you were uh, stopped by the police at the Lincoln Tunnel? That's right, that's right. It was later on. But um, I was in New York with the chap that's right next to the door over there and the glass board blew that bulb. He and I had gone to a meeting in New York, and after the technical meeting, we started home in my car, and I turned on the television just for the fun of it. There was a doubleheader on uh, the Yankees that night, and the ball game was on. So I drove to the Lincoln Tunnel, and the officer at the Lincoln Tunnel said, hey, wait a minute, what's that? I had an antenna on top with ropes to turn it the right direction, and uh, a Yagi antenna, a little one, and he said, that thing may hit trucks on the way through in the passages. I said, no, it's television. Take a look. He looked back and he said, <laughs> he looked at the program. He said, hey, Sarge, television. Nobody had ever seen television in an automobile before. So they came and watched the whole inning of the ball game. Well, to get television working in an automobile isn't very simple. I took a rotary machine, which is an engineering friend of mine in, in uh Canada had built for me, which is a slipping clutch, so that I'd belt it to the fan belt, belt, and it would turn, if you had to run the engine a little bit higher than normal speed, and that slipping clutch would keep it right at 60 cycles, 110 volts AC. But running that on that sort of system. Well, after a while, uh, the other officer had come over to watch, says, oh, I reluctantly have to go and get those trucks out of their jam in that other lane. <laughs> so we went on through. Later on, the uh, New Yorker magazine reporter was riding around in Montclair in a car with me, and a car stopped alongside, and I rolled the window down. He said, ham? 
the ham. He came on and said, what you got there, a ham rig? And I said, no, it's television. And I was telling him, so it was written up in the New Yorker magazine. I happened to be out in Los Angeles when it came off the press. My secretary called and said, "It's uh, New Yorker's got some. I went down there and found out. And the label was ham on that, an article about this <laughs> the mobile television around there.